welcome to a special Road to Cheltenham wrap. Now, usually we only do this for the Cheltenham Festival, but really we decided we'd do it for the Dublin Racing Festival too. Who decided that? I don't know. It wasn't me. Was it I not mean, you? Look, look, look at all the fun we're missing over there. <laughs> well, you're going to be straight over there afterwards. Oh, yeah. You? Can't wait, yeah. Yeah. I don't believe him, I don't know whether you do. Right, well, it's been a Willie Mullins spectacular. All four grade ones have gone to Willie. It's also been a day for Danny Mullins. Should we start at the beginning with the Nathaniel Lacey in Dancing City causing a little bit of an upset, I was would have it? thought so, a bit of a surprise. Um, Danny went slow early, Jatara got a bit keen at the last hurdle with a circle to go, jumped to the front under Rachel Blackmore. Didn't seem to pick up for a long way, then Rachel lost her iron before it turned out of the back. Ended up dropping into the saddle and Jatara raced around the bend to the second last and kind of ran her race. Danny came along and dancing City Predators goal to run a big keen going up from two miles he never really settled and probably gave away his chance he'd probably go two and a half now in the bearing Bingham but Dancing City kept going really well and looks an Albert Barton the type to go at high class hero he did exactly William Mullins saying it exactly the same so uh, an interesting run out and the one that looks as though he will improve for a step up to three miles then we had the one two three four in the spring for Willie Mullins uh, headed by Cargisi is how I'm being told that I should be pronouncing this Cargisi Cargisi mm -hmm. who told yeah. you how to pronounce that uh, that was Peter Maloney Peter because Maloney. apparently the, the, the French breeders have been on to say that that is how you say it. So, you yeah, know. but we're not in France, so <laughs> when in Ireland do as the Irish do. <laughs> how are you going Cargies. to call that? Right, OK. Anyway, anyway she won. She did she was a lot less buzzy than last time. She was. Uh, probably a better gallop sooner than Marge, but I went a decent enough clip in front. In Tolotto, was quite keen, with mm. Daryl Jacob handy down the inside. Different but, tactics there, yeah. I was surprised. But lined up in the same place, only would obviously missed the first and a maiden hurl and got back and settled. Today it didn't, it jumped much better than always race with the choke out. Thought Marge ran really well. Uh, You're for his sweet first on run. that horse. You oh, like I just think he's a horse for the future, yeah, I do. Um, thought he jumped well on the hole and he kept going really well. Cargis to me settled better as you said she thought she looked really well in the paddock thought she looked strong mm -hmm. thought Carla Conti kept going well looked like it was going to fade early uh, Stormheart ran his race Bunting might have got caught a bit far back he ran on well made he a might few mistakes been, as well yeah, didn't he could be the one to improve and Highwind didn't jump well but Cargis was always in the right place for Danny Mullins had the pace to get out when Stormheart went to keep him in on the point of the bend and wasn't for catching from their home Okay, well, Willie Mendes is thinking of going to the Triumph with all four, the first four home. On night seven, he goes home, he might make that five and six, no, will he? <laughs> um, so Gino, though, is he going to be, Nicky Henson uh, going to be worried about anything he's seen there? Doubt he was having a sleep, I don't think he'll have a sleep this night tonight. No, no, and Calaconte might not be going to the Triumph, Gordon was more inclined to go up to two and a half, was that, is that uh, Fairy yeah, House? Or Fairy is it, House, not, not four old only. There's a two and a half open novice, but I think it no might be that then. Yeah, there's no two and a half four mile four year old race now. talking about taking advantage of yeah. the allowance. So yeah, I think that's it must open be grade. That. Yeah, grade yeah. two at Fairy House. And Easter is so close to Cheltenham, it's only two weeks after. I'd say maybe some of those Irish horses that are 50 50 might stay for Fairy House. Okay. Uh, the third race was the Irish Arkle and Il Tom again, downing his stable companion Fasil Vigo, who finished third, but more importantly, Marine National underperforming. What did you make of this? Ground. I uh, I didn't wasn't happy watching Marie National. Not happy is the wrong word. I thought from a long way out. His head was up. His nose was out. He wears a tongue tie, and it looked to me like that's what that what, what the problem was. And he faded from the last. Thought Fasa Viga ran better than he ran at Christmas, but still wants to go further. Yes. Didn't turn. Got closer to found the fifty. or ran a better race against found the fifty. But he let to Tom Danny well timed ride. Rode for a bit of luck. He was the last one to challenge. Um, found the 50 got the best jump at the last but to be fair to Ilete Tomp he rallied well and battled all the way to the line he was really tenacious he's earned his spot in the Arkle you would think is Cheltenham going to suit him as much as Leopard Sound clearly does I don't know but an Arkle that looked an open and shut case is all of a sudden wide up yeah and I thought that Founder 50 showed a bit more maturity this time than last yeah, time yeah he was definitely more professional um, went a better gallop jumped straighter yeah it was but I thought when he jumped the last, the way he jumped the last, he'd get home and he didn't. Mm. Um, he lets it Thomas in through for fence, hasn't he? He's, just, yeah. he's not kicking them out of the way. He no, he's a bit more respect, but I looking at him, I wouldn't have dreamt of running him over fences. He's tiny, yeah. but he's he's better at it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's very good indeed. I'm interested that you think it was the ground with Marine National. Michael O'Sullivan wasn't keen to point to anything really. The, the horse was jumping a bit more carefully than last time, I and obviously he made a mistake when beaten at the last. I just thought, looking at his head carriage, I just thought where his head was, never where happened. his nose was. Usually, like when a horse sticks out his mouth looking for air, never a good sight. Right. Okay. Can he bounce back in time? Better ground. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, the race and stay Leveson handicap hurdle went to Maxim, and yeah. uh, this was the horse that you and I, right at the start of last season's Road to Cheltenham, we were thinking if he carries on this rate of improvement, he could be a stayers hurdle player. He got lost a little bit, but he's back now. He is back now. He was always in a good position, though. They went steady in that three mile handicap Agreed. hurdle. He was always well paced under Carol Miller uh, and stayed really well to beat Gay Cool. And Gordon's other horse was third. Um, thought Yates Gay Cool, star. Yates star. Thought Gay Cool ran well from well off the pace. Uh, but I thought Maxim was a tough winner. He was a uh, good winner for Carl Miller as well. Yes, and that's uh, that's only his ninth win. He's been with Gordon's a couple of seasons, and he seems to be doing well. He does, yeah, he does. He's going the right direction, and uh, yeah, look, it was a big win for him. And I suppose you just your horse like Maxim, you keep going, eventually get your chance again, don't you? Yeah, and uh, yeah, biggest win of, of Carl's career so far could end up on him potentially again if they go for the part in pipe. That's what Gordon was thinking potentially that be yeah. the race for him. We could, kind of would prefer a novice myself, but you could could see him there, yeah. Um, there we had the Irish Gold Cup. It was a 13th win in the race for Willie Mullins and back-to-back -back wins for Paul Tannard and Gallopin de Champ, beating fast or slow, making it two all. But this is the important one, wasn't it? This was quite a dominant performance, I thought. It, it was a dominant performance. Now, maybe if you're looking at it from a fast or slow point of view, where you're going to get the improvement that turned that around, maybe a drier surface at Cheltenham might be the difference. But um, I thought it was great. There was a huge crowd here. I mean, even to come in this morning at half ten and see the queue outside the gate, Obviously, you knew they were English people because the Irish should never be queuing. Um, <laughs> but it was just incredible to see. And the crowd that was here, Lepstown is not that big a place. The goats of 18,000 people, you wanted those two horses to come off the bend together yes. and go to the last. You wanted a horse race. You got a horse race. And I thought Gallopin was good. He made the run and he went along. They didn't go mad. They went quite sedate. They built up through the race. The right two came to the fore. Gallop in the shop won. And I think it's big for horse racing. I, think, I, I hope he goes and wins the Gold Cup. And it puts the bed to myth that you can't run these horses. Yes, well, funny enough, I was asking Willie Mullins whether there was any ever any temptation after winning the Savills Chase so dominantly of not coming here, and he was of the same view. You know, these are the best horses; they should be running. The Irish Gold Cup is an important Grade One in its own right. Here we are. Yeah, exactly. And I think for a long time, Willie was campaigning, and to me, in, in the background on different committees, to get the John Durkin moved. Yes. Because it was stopping those horses running at Christmas. It moved. He got beaten in the John Durkin, so what? But he came back here and won, it, won the Savills. He's gone on then to win it, uh, come here against Fast or Slow, and hopefully they'll both go to Cheltenham. But you know, if you have the right races and they're in the right places, but enough time between them, you get to see them, and we want to see them. So I hope he goes and wins the Gold Cup and puts that myth to bed. So, so do I. I thought he was a little bit more careful this time. Was that a function of the steadier pace, do you think? I'd say making the running more so it's probably he did it as a novice when he was enthusiastic but now he races behind the bridle so when you're behind the bridle with no contact from your hand to the bit it's much harder to generate the power to jump mm -hmm. so he's behind the bridle he was always going to be a bit more careful until he upped a little bit of speed and got him racing and then he attacked his fences and tell me about the last that little look on the he outside. had a look at the wing yeah paul was quick two taps whipping the right hand two taps on his shoulder but that's always the risk you run when you're in front you go close to the wing you are tempted Paul was ready, the horse had a look, quick tap back in. And it was also because Fast or Slow was trying to come up on the outside, he was wanting to make sure... Yeah, he kept it over, he got yeah. all the way over. Yeah. There, there, there did seem to be a bias, you pointed out at Christmas to the outside of the track. JJ wanted to be there, so did Paul, they got right over, but when Paul got in front of JJ, then that wing came into the vision of yes. a gallop in the champ. So, yeah. look, it's always the chance you're taking, but that's... Well, you were making that point, we were talking about this earlier in the season, weren't you? And I was sort of saying, you know, with what... what is it every horse that might, might if presented with that chance? You were yeah. saying that Denman would, would, would take Definitely it. Got, but, but it is, look, you're, 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 it's like anything in life. You tempt somebody. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Don't. I, I, I don't know what you mean. I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, uh, I've that, never, that, never been is tempted. That, is this that bar closed yet? No. <laughs> is, is it? Uh, well, let's kick on, shall we? We've got an English winner, British trained Brilliant. winner, Madara, Sophie Leach, and also a first win, that was her first win in Ireland, also Keith Reeveley's first win in Ireland. He hasn't ridden here since the 2012-2013 season. I'd say he probably never rode here, but James Reeveley got on quite sorry, well. Did, what did I say? Keith. Did I say Keith? Oh, sorry, everybody. James. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that would have been so tacky if it had been Keith would have been a good sight. Um, <laughs> so he would, but uh, fair play to James. Um, and I, great to see it. Look, it just shows... Last year, top field Ben ran really well here. Madara has come 59,000 euros to the winner. Owners having a good weekend out. It can be done, you know. Yeah, it can be done. And it's a really important success. And I hope many people pay attention. Right division, I think. Would I be right in thinking yeah, that the two-mile division in Ireland isn't like quite the, as deep? Like on the flat, Lydia, Irish sprinters are never quite as good as their 
oh, as, as they go up in distance on the flat and it's the same over jumps, two mile chases here. I always maintain that if you were going for a touch in Ireland, two mile handicap chases are this. Yeah. Interesting afterwards, Sophie Leach was saying they were thinking about the plate, they're now thinking back to Grand Daniel. I do think a stiff two mile suits, hence the win at the new course, hence the win here. I'm not convinced about the Grand Daniel so myself. Uh, I think, I'm not sure. We'll know on Thursday. <laughs> Promise. Uh, the last race. Joe Bowen Machan winning his second yeah, bumper for beating, Emmett Mullins. You ought to know. Good performance from the winner. Derek O'Connor always in a good position. You ought to know. Ran a blinder, and the two hot people, parts the people were giving out about it. Shouldn't have even been here. Both got ran over. Yes, I thought that um, a dream to share looked a little tubby. I thought the same. I wouldn't say tubby. He just didn't look hard fit. Yeah. He looked, uh, yeah, tubby, all right. Tubby. <laughs> he did look like he'd improve. Redemption day was too keen, but you know, there's so what. We've got a new star in the future, maybe, in the winner. I, uh, and it was um, Derek O'Connor who was on board, I couldn't um, tempt Emmett to be definitive about whether he'd run the horse at, at Cheltenham. What's his second name? <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. And he said, I've got all sorts of options. I said, care to, to share any? Nope, nope. Uh, I do find out that Corbett's Cross is going to run at Ferry House on Wednesday though. Oh yeah. And he didn't work that well during the week, didn't please him, hence he didn't want to travel to Sandown with him. He worked a lot better this morning. Yeah, it's a good enough reason not to go. Um, see him during the week, but yeah, I think see him jump a bit quicker, Corbett's Cross, so we'll watch that on Wednesday and we'll talk about it Thursday too. I also tempted him into saying that he now prioritised the National Hunt chase for Corbett's Cross. Did that he? is what he was thinking, yeah. At this moment, obviously he reserves the right to change his mind, but that's what he was thinking at this stage. Fair play. Yeah. And Noble Yates, by the way, has come out of the Cleve really well, uh, and the cheap pieces will be going back on at the in the stairs hurdle. As I think we probably Shock all hard. imagined that they would do. So, that is the end of the first day of the Dunham Racing Festival. I hope you enjoyed our Road to Cheltenham wrap. We'll be doing the same tomorrow night. Thank you for watching.